Hi, welcome to lesson number three, module four of our Apache Spark and Scala course. So in this important lesson, we will be looking at a sample word count example in Spark and we will also go in depth, deep and analyze how Spark actually executes a particular program. So we will go behind the scenes and explore how Spark creates a DAG and an action plan to in fact execute your course of action. So before we proceed, let's uh, quickly recap the uh, last lesson and in the last lesson we had a look at count, reduce, for each, count by key and save as text file uh, which are basically the actions which we can perform on the RDD. Now remember the actions will typically show you an output or will save the output rather than creating a new RDD which is typically done using transformations. So in this particular lesson, first we will try to write a very simple word count example uh, using Spark and then we will explore the job operation using the uh, word count uh, program. We will understand uh, different types of transformations such as narrow, wide and we will also understand stages and their dependencies using this single, uh, simple word count program. We will also look into something called scheduling and shuffling in Spark. So let's demonstrate a word count program. Now the word count program, if you're coming from the Hadoop back background, must be a very familiar program to you. So basically this program will count the occurrence of words in any given input text file. So basically you're just saying that, hey, uh, in this text file, this particular word is repeating three times or five times. So basically the idea is to create a very simple program which can give you uh, this output. So the objective is to count the number of times the word has occurred. And we'll define the RDD first and we'll load the data, run the program and verify the output as well. Now I have explicitly kept this slide to show you the, uh, the advantage and conciseness of Spark programming. Now on the left hand side you can see the same word count program which is written in Java. So this is basically a MapReduce program which will run in a Hadoop cluster. And on the right hand side you can see the equivalent Spark Scala code. And look at the difference in the number of lines of code. And this is one reason people love Spark because the application development time will be considerably reduced, the code maintenance will be very, very easy and even debugging becomes very easy. So to demonstrate our program, we have an input file. Now, as you can see, it's a text file uh, with the name input file one and it just contains a set of words like Jack, Bill, Joe, Jack, Don, Bill, so on and so forth and as you can see each word is repeating multiple times and the objective is to count the number of occurrence of each word. So let's see. So here is the Scala code, uh, the Scala Spark code for the same word count example. Now if you look at the code it is almost self-explanatory but we will have a look at each and every piece of code and understand what it does. So the first line of code is basically how you read your input file. So here I'm cre uh, creating a variable, an RDD called text file. So I'm doing a val text file, that's my RDD. Then I'm saying sc.text file and using the text file method, I'm reading the input.txt from my local file system. Now, once you have the data, which is the text file, I'm creating another RDD called counts. So you can see that I'm typing val counts and on the text file RDD, I'm first applying a flat map 
transformation. So what do I do in flat map? Basically, I'll write line and then rocket symbol, line dot split space. So basically, I want to split each line with space. And then I'm again applying a map transformation wherein I will say word and then word comma one. So every word I'm converting into a key value pair where the same word will be the key and the one will be the value. And then I'm doing a dot reduce by key. Now reduce by key is a very interesting um, action. So what it actually does is that it will keep your key and apply whatever transformation that you want to do on all the values belonging to the key. So in here, I'm typing reduce by key underscore plus underscore. So this, this practically says uh, x comma y, x plus y. That means each, each uh, value I want to add together. So for the same key, it is going to apply the add action. So it's going to sum up all the values. And at last, I will uh, save the output file using the save as text file action. So I'm applying this on the counts RDD. You can see that counts dot save as text file and then there is a location. So basically, this is the very simple program for, uh, you know, counting the number of words. So here you can see that I'm creating the text file RDD by reading the data using the text file method. And the data is in my local file system uh, in my desktop. The file is input.txt. So go ahead and type the same command so that if you want, you can practice along with me. You can pause the recording for a moment and then just do it along with me. You can create this file called input.txt anywhere in your local machine. And then just make sure that you are, you are typing the exact path and read it to this RDD called uh, text file. So here is the big bunch of code which basically creates the RDD called counts. Uh, nothing to worry about. So basically, uh, what we are doing here is a text file dot flat map. So first we will look at each line and then we're going to split it using uh, space. Um, so basically this is how you extract every line and we are applying the flat map transformation. Uh, and for each line again, then you are applying a map transformation where for every line you are going to have uh, a set of words. So you're going to say for each word, convert it into word comma one, right? So that you are creating key value pairs from existing words. And finally, you will say reduce by key. So the reduce by key operation is applied with a plus operator. So underscore plus underscore basically means for a given key, I want to sum all the values. So reduce by key uh, typically have applies for each key individually. In our example, each key is a word. And if there is a repeating word, then you will have multiple uh, key value pairs with the same word as the key. So basically, uh, when I say reduce by key, underscore plus underscore, it means, hey, read the word. And if you have multiple ones that are the values for the same word, just sum them, add them, right? And then I'm doing uh, calling uh, an action. You can see here count uh, dot save as text file. And then you can give a location and it's going to save the output in there. So pretty simple uh, piece of code, uh, no uh, rocket science in there. And by this time, I'm assuming most of you will be able to understand the code. And to just get an idea about the uh, final result, you can simply do a output.collect method. So the collect action actually shows you uh, the final result, which is contained in the RDD called output. And as you can see, we have counted the individual words, Bill and Jack and Joe repeating four times and then Don repeating six times. So this can be taken as a very simple example for um, creating a, a Spark program, which can count the number of words in any input file.
So as of now, what we have seen in Spark is how you can load the file and then how you can apply a set of transformations and actions and then see the result. We were not really concerned about what is happening behind the scenes. And also we were not really concerned about any sort of performance tuning uh, in Spark as well. So let's have a look at these concepts. So there are two major concepts. There is data dependencies and scheduling process. So let's jump to the next slide and let's take the same example to understand this. Now, what exactly are dependencies? Now, transformations create dependencies between RDDs and here we can see different type of them. So basically, dependencies means the transformations and the resulting RDDs will be dependent on the parent RDDs. And you can in fact divide the transformations into two types. There is something called a narrow transformation and then there is something called a wide transformation. To give you an example, so let's take an example of a map or a filter. So let's say you are applying a map operation. So you can, you can look at the example which is displayed uh, in the slide and you can look at the particular box which says map comma filter. So let's imagine we are doing a map and as you can see the RDD, the original RDD which is in blue in color has four partitions. That means your data is in four partitions. Now when I apply, uh, apply a map transformation, what is going to happen is that the map will be applied to each and every line parallelly. So that means there is no need for data movement here. The map function, the map transformation basically works on every partition the same way. And as you can see, the, it, the four tasks will be running parallelly and producing output. So the advantage of map or such type of transformations, which we call it as narrow transformations, is that they are a low cost operation. So why do you call them as low cost operation? Because there is no real data movement between the partitions in an RDD. Now each partition of the parent RDD is used by most one partition of the child RDD. So this type of transformation is called as a narrow transformation. So the examples are map, filter, union, so on and so forth. So this is applied locally on each partition. There is no shuffling required. So that means you can apply a map operation on one partition and create a result in an equivalent partition. So that means there is no shuffling happening here. On the other side, there is another type of transformation called wide transformation. So when you look at wide transformation, what is exactly happening here is that there is a lot of shuffle which is happening over the network. So let's look at the example which is group by key. So when you apply the transformation called group by key, what Spark actually does, it's going to look at a particular key and then it's going to bring all the values of that key together and then apply some common, uh, uh, you know, then later you can apply some common operations on that. So this means in the original RDD, the grouping key and the values might be lying in different, different partitions. And when you call a group by key transformation, Spark has to look into each partition and then bring the values together for a single key. So there is a lot of shuffling happen. There is a lot of data movement over the network happening and it is a costly operation. Now this is applied across the network. So all the values must be known before this operation. So what this actually means to a developer is that the transformations such as group by key, which is basically a wide transformation, are costly. And when you are writing a Spark code, you should try to avoid as much as as much of wide transformations. Now, now let's see what exactly is a scheduling process. 
Now, scheduling simply means how many jobs from users can be optimized at once. So, in a typical Spark cluster, there will be a lot of jobs which are being submitted by users. Now, how do you optimize all these different, different jobs? That is taken care by your scheduling. Now, you can see the different stages of scheduling and this will become very, very clear as we go along this slide. But originally, you have something called RDD object and Spark will uh, build an operator DAG for the entire code you have written. And then what the DAG will do, it will split the entire DAG into different stages based on whether the tasks are having narrow or wide transformations. And then it will submit each stage. And the cluster manager launches task uh, uh, through the uh, cluster manager process. And finally, your results will be stored and served as block. So this is basically what is happening in uh, scheduling. Uh, but to get a better uh, in-depth understanding, let's have a look at it in depth. Now, before we actually go to the uh, scheduling process, let's understand some terminology. Now, the first one is called a job. Now, a job is the action which is submitted to the DAG scheduler by the Spark driver. So you can typically call a job as a program. So if you have written, say, uh, four transformations and then you are calling an action, then that can be a job. And that will be submitted by your driver to the DAG scheduler. Now, a stage is a collection of tasks. So the stages are grouped by making sure that tasks having no shuffle are coming into one stage. So whenever there is a shuffle operation happening, Spark has to keep it as a different stage. Uh, we will see this in depth and then you will understand that. Now, a task is a unit of work within a stage corresponding to one partition. And shuffle, as we understand, is the movement of data or transfer of data between stages. So here is a pictorial uh, diagram dis uh, representing the same concepts that I have discussed in the previous slide. Now let's have a DAG view of a particular line of code in the word count. So if you look at the piece of code that we are analyzing, we have the sc.txt file method and then we have a flat map, map and reduce by key operations. So what exactly happens? If you look at the chain of operations that are triggered by this, this is how a directed, directed acyclic graph view will look like. Now, in the first method, sc.txt file, Spark will read your data and load it into three partitions. Now, this will make sure that your data is available in three partitions. And then you are applying a flat map operation. Now remember, the flat map operation is a narrow transformation, which means you can parallelly run this on all three partitions. So once the flat map is applied, uh, your uh, map RDD is created, which also has three partitions very similar to your original RDD. And after that, we have the map transformation, which is again a narrow transformation. And again, three parallel uh, transformations happens on three partitions, which produces the third stage. But the fourth transformation called reduce by key is a wide transformation. So when I have to apply reduce by key, I have to look at all the values across multiple partitions. And that is why you end up having two partitions in the result. So basically, you have to shuffle through all the partitions and find out the values for each key. So here you can get a complete idea about something called a stage. So what Spark actually does is that it will group the narrow transformations into one stage. So here you can see that the sc.txt file, flat map, and map are executed in one stage because they are all narrow transformations. And after that, the reduce by key is a wide transformation. So that is executed in a different stage. So we can say that in this particular job, there are two stages, stage one and stage two. 
Stage 1 contains three transformations. Obviously, they are narrow. And stage 2 contains a single wide transformation. So, the Diag scheduler will convert narrow and wide transformations into separate stages. And you can see the, them from the uh, example that I have given. And the shuffling is performed accordingly. Now, let's have a look at the shuffling process as well. So, here you can see the uh, original RDD before the shuffling happening. And then you can see that after the shuffling stage, there are only two partitions, right? So, there is something called shuffle write and then shuffle read. So, in the shuffle write, basically uh, what is happening is that it redistributes data among partition and write files to disk. Each hash shuffle task creates one file per reduced task and it saw shuffle use in memory sorting. And the shuffle read will fetch the files and applies the reduced logic. And if data ordering is needed, then it is sorted on the reducer logic. So, here you can see that uh, uh, in the original RDD, which is having three partitions, each stage one task will read the Hadoop input and it will perform map and filters and write partial sums. Whereas in the shuffle, it will read partial sums and invoke the user function pass to run the job. So, let's have a look at the summary of RDD job execution. So, the first layer is the REPL. So, the REPL is basically uh, interpreting and compiling your code. So, once you execute your code, it will create the RDD and then Spark will create an operator graph. When program runs, the graph is submitted to the DAG scheduler. The DAG scheduler pipelines operators together to optimize the graph. The final result of DAG is a set of stages. The stages are passed on to task scheduler and the task scheduler launches tasks via cluster manager. The worker will execute the task. A new JVM is started per job. So, in a nutshell, we can see that on the outer layer, we have something called a job and the job is then converted into a DAG. A DAG will have multiple stages and each stage will have tasks which are nothing but transformations. So, to wrap up in this particular lesson, we have explored the Spark job, job operation using the word count program. We understood the transformation dependencies and understood more about scheduling and shuffling. That's all for this lesson. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to raise a support ticket. Thank you.